I am Dr. Kenneth Cousy, Chief of the Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism at the University of Florida at Gainesville. The editorial office of the Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology asked me to share with you my thoughts on our recent publication on the effects of pioglitazone in patients with NASH having or not having type 2 diabetes. The background for this study is the publication we had in September of 2016 in the Annals of Internal Medicine where we took a group of patients without diabetes and uh, another half with type 2 diabetes and we treated them with pioglitazone for 18 months and we continued um, open label treatment for another 18 months with biopsies before at 18 months and 36 months. The primary endpoint of that study was a change on, in two or more in the NAFLD activity score without a worsening of fibrosis. In that study, about two thirds of patients reached the primary endpoint and 65% of those on pioglitazone compared to about 20% on placebo reached uh, resolution of NASH. Now the question that we had since then do patients with diabetes behave or respond better to pioglitazone compared to those without diabetes? In our studies, they had prediabetes. The only evidence we had in prediabetes was from PIVINS that only studied patients without diabetes. However, from this study and an earlier study by my lab with Dr. Bill Fort, uh, published in 2006 in the New England, we pulled this data to try to get an answer. So what we did uh, in the study was, in addition to liver biopsies, we did a number of measures of liver fat by magnetic resonance and spectroscopy and insulin sensitivity studies called insulin clamps to look at the effect of treatment in these patients. What did we find? Well, the primary endpoint and resolution of NASH was achieved similarly in patients without diabetes but with prediabetes compared to those with type 2 diabetes. The liver fat changes were the same. Muscle and liver insulin sensitivity were not all that different and improved pretty much to the levels of an obese individual without a fatty liver. But we saw two major differences. Number one, adipose tissue insulin sensitivity improved more in patients with type 2 diabetes, an indication that the drug has a primary target in adipose tissue, which is very important in the pathogenesis of NAFLD as the high levels of free fatty acids fluxing to the liver promote steatosis and cause the lipotoxicity insult. And second, most importantly, we saw a significant difference in the progression to fibrosis when patients with type 2 diabetes are treated with pyoglitazone. The bottom line is, the take home message is that because patients with type 2 diabetes progress more rapidly and did worse after 18 months if on placebo, treatment with pioglitazone offered them a greater protection. So the take home message for the clinician is that particularly target treatment to those patients with type 2 diabetes as pioglitazone, which is now a generic that cost less than $15 a month is safe and the medication was well tolerated by the vast majority of patients. So thank you and hopefully this will be useful for your clinical practice.